part four. We're going to need the results from part three for this one, so I'll just um, paste this here. This is what we concluded in part three. And just to get an intuitive idea of what's going on here, this is this bit, except with n replaced with n minus one. So this is like the previous one of that. And so it's saying that each one of these is the negative of the previous one. So that makes sense that it would be something like minus one to the n. Um, just to make the writing out of this simpler, I'm gonna define this function to be this thing. Just so I don't have to write that out a billion times. And you could say something like um, from part three, f of n equals negative f of n minus one. So I'm just restating that with my new notation that I've defined now. Uh, so let's work out the first one because we're trying to prove it for n greater than one. So let's start with um, n equals two. So that's gonna be d of two minus two d of one and we're given d of two is one and d of one is zero. So that's one minus two times zero, which is one. Um, and that's good because that's negative one squared, so that fits that. And then let's work out f of three. So by the little rule that I've written here, that's going to equal negative f of two, so negative one, which is negative one cubed. So that's great. Um, and now this is a one mark question, so you don't get have to go into a huge amount of detail with this. You can just sort of, I might do one more, f of four equals negative f of three. Um, and then you can just sort of say dot, 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 f of n. So that's minus one to the n. You could also um, make a proper proof with like induction if you wanted, but since it's just a one mark question, that's fine. Part five. Again, we're gonna need the results from the previous question, so I'll just um, paste that there. So that's what we concluded in part four. And that's gonna be really useful for this question because if I rearrange that, I'm just gonna move that over the other side. And we get this nice formula for d of n in terms of the previous one. So that's really useful for induction. But let's start with n equals one. So we have to show that that's true first for n equals one. Uh, so let's work out that. So r equals zero to one, negative one to the r on r factorial. One factorial is just one. And then this, we start with r equals zero. So negative one to the zero, that's one. And zero factorial is defined as one. And then this again with r equals one. So negative one to the one is negative one, and one factorial is one. So that's one, and that's negative one, so one plus negative one, which is zero. So that's good, because that's what it said d of one was in the previous, um, in part four, it said that. Okay, so now we want to assume that it's true for n equals k. So if d of k equals k factorial of k negative one on r factorial then and we want to show that that it's true for for k plus one and here's where that formula comes in so I'm just going to use that with replacing the n with k plus one And just to clarify where I got that from in your in your answer, you should say something like from part four. All right, now we're assuming that that's true, so you can just plug that into there. All right. 
Now, in the back of your mind, what you want to have here is a sort of picture of where we're going. So we're trying to show this, but with k plus 1. So what we want this to end up as is k plus 1 factorial sum i equals 0 to k plus 1 of negative 1 r on r factorial. So just that with uh, k plus 1 instead of k. So that's where we want this to end up. We want to manipulate this until it turns into that. So the first thing you might notice is you've got this k plus 1 times k factorial. And that's actually the same as k plus 1 factorial. So we can go ahead and replace that. And also what we want to have is like k plus 1 factorial times one thing. And what we have here is k plus 1 factorial times that and then plus this other thing. So we want to sort of bring that into the k plus 1 factorial bit, if that makes any sense. So what I want to do is have this and then kind of like bring this inside these brackets that I want to have here. So the way you would do that is you'd have negative 1 to the k plus 1 over the k plus 1 factorial. So that if you expand this, you that times that is going to give you that. All right. Now what we're trying to do is say that this is equal to that. So does that make sense? Well, the last term of this is, is negative 1 to the k on k factorial. And then you're adding on negative 1 to the k plus 1 on k plus 1 factorial. Well, that's just the next term in that sequence. So you can just go straight ahead and say the sum is now going from 0 to k plus 1 because we've got this extra term. And that's where we wanted to get to. I, I wouldn't write that in your actual answer. This is just sort of rough working off to the side. All right, so that's where we wanted to get to. Um, so that's, you know, that's it. Then you can just say, you know, therefore um, true for all n greater than equal to 1. And that's it.